My name is Jennifer Doudna. I work at University of California, Berkeley, and I work on genome editing. Jennifer, you were growing up in Hilo, Hawaii. I was a, a school kid there, and my family had moved from Michigan to the island of Hawaii. Yeah, I felt a bit like a freak. I was uh, taller than most of the kids, and I had different eye color, different hair color. I buried myself in books. I mean, there were many times when I felt um, very unhappy and when I was growing up, you know, in different ways. I felt very isolated. I felt very alone. I had to rely on my internal voice that said, it's okay to be different. So this kind of isolation really propelled you then later to study science. In some ways it did. I think the fact that I was growing up in a unique environment in Hawaii, I think that's been very important for me as a scientist also, keeping an open mind about things, um, making observations about things. I think those are qualities that one wants to have as a scientist. How was it to find your own way? I learned over time to trust myself. My um, graduate advisor, Jack Shostak, he's now a Nobel Laureate, of course, and uh, but in those days, you know, he was just clearly a genius. I thought, you know, and he came to me in the lab and he said, "I had an idea about an experiment, but I want to tell it to you and see if you think it's a good idea." And imagine for a student to be asked that question by a senior professor at Harvard. He trusts my judgment. He wants my input on an idea that he has, and it was that type of interaction that really built my confidence over time. When did the idea came up to CRISPR-Cas? My very first conversation about CRISPR-Cas was actually a conversation with a colleague at Berkeley, Jill Banfield, who was one of the early scientists noticing CRISPR-Cas sequences of DNA in bacteria and wondering about their function. And you met then in a conference, Emmanuel Charpentier. Yeah, well, you know, one of the things that's wonderful about doing science is that a lot of ideas and work that scientists do is a result of collaboration. And this was absolutely the case for myself and Emmanuel Charpentier. So we met, we discussed the CRISPR system that was operating in a bacterium that her laboratory was studying, and we realized there was a fundamental question about the function of a protein called the Cas9 that was active in that type of organism that allows scientists to program an enzyme to go into that rope of DNA, find a single place in the rope that is recognized by a chemical mechanism in the enzyme and make a cut to the rope. And then those broken ends are repaired by the cell and in the process of sealing the ends back together, a change can be introduced into the code of life. And so this allows scientists now to alter the DNA sequence precisely in cells in a way that was very difficult to do in the past. Everybody is saying you and Emmanuel Charpentier will get the Nobel Prize. Do you think so too? I don't worry about that. I focus on what I can do today and working with my students in my lab, with my collaborators. I really want to see the science advance and I'd like to see gene editing used to cure diseases. That'd be great. Several women I talked to had some hurdles because men said, oh, I'm not sure if she'll be able to do it. There are many times in my life and in my career when people said to me, you won't be able to do that. That idea won't work. Um, you won't be able to achieve this goal. You won't be able to get into this college, you know, things like that. But, you know, I'm a very stubborn person. And I said, well, I'm going to try. And if it doesn't pan out for me, I'll do something else. But if it does pan out, then it will open the door to a lot of opportunities. And I've always sort of taken that path even with my research. You know, I think some of the things that we've worked on, and CRISPR is a great example, right? It's something that I just thought was interesting. I wasn't pursuing it for any particular goal. I thought it was going to help us understand something fundamental about evolution. That's actually why I wanted to work on it in the first place. And even though there were people that said to me, that's a crazy project, it's not very interesting, uh, it's something never, no one's ever heard of, I still thought that there was some very interesting biology to be learned from investigating it, and so I worked on it anyway. And I'm glad I did. <laughs>